Maybe, maybe you should go and do some contemplating. Hi, this is Rachel McElroy. Hi, this is Griffin McElroy. And this is Rose Buddies. Reunited and it feels so good. We went to the grocery store on Sunday. Yeah, we did. Slow it down. The grocery store that you know. Taylor Redemption. Sexy Taylor Redemption. H E B. But Griffin and Rachel, you swore never again. I know what I swore. When I make a swear, I I remember it. <laughs> Uh, we're back on that Super Water Zero train, I was cruising down that sports drink aisle. I was cruising down it because I had to get some cat food at the end of it. I was cruising. I was like, let me just check in on my old friend. Hey, Super Water, it's been a while. You remember when I dumped you down the sink? (laughs) I dumped like four of you down the sink. You ratty ass motherfuckers. Dirty old, old ruined old water. Let me just see what's up on this cap. You want to read that cap for me? 14th of July... 2016. That's right. I could sit on this shit for four months. Did you have to go through a bunch to get to one that wasn't expired? No, they were all good to go. All the same color, too. I was showcasing. I was so proud. We got home from the grocery store. I took all my super my super water bounty out of the bags. Look at them, baby. I said, holding them up to the sunlight. Baby, look at them. All the same color. These are our fucking monochromatic homies. I'm excited to drink all of them, starting with this one today. So you must have bought like more than three or four, right? You must have just like let's let's buy a dozen since the last until July. I bought enough to get me through this season of Rose Buddies. <laughs> I never understand why you, why you don't just buy like a month's worth to just keep stock because they don't have a month's worth. Usually they have like seven. No. <laughs> Yeah. Well, of the good flavor. I could dip into that fucking mango garbage. That's how we can track our ratings for the show, is how much Super Water Zero is on the shelf at H-E-B. And this must have been a fresh crop. This must have been, like, they were bringing it up to the shelves, like, ooh, ooh, hot, hot, hot. Because <laughs> they baked them in the back room. Gang, welcome to the Rose Buddies sex episode. <laughs> we're happy to have you. We're going to do two of these a year, I guess. Unless during, yeah, Rachel's doing a little dance. You gonna cut in some music? Yeah, here? I'm gonna put an amber as the color of your energy by three one one. Is or, that your your doing it music? Yeah, it's got the perfect tempo. Hmm. You know, is that what you're listening to in your headphones blah, 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 blah. when we go to look at look at me our in the, boudoir? Look at me in the eyes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> welcome to the sex episode. That's right, Ben Higgins. Did the damn thing three times, three times in a row. Once, twice, three times. A, a, a lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I had some stuff to drink tonight. I feel like the last episode I was sober as a nun. This one I'm sober as. Is a, that an expression? This time I'm as sober as a fun. <laughs> <laughs> because it was, um, maybe it's because I was watching it through the lens of like knowing that we had shepherded in a new batch of viewers right? to the show. And so watching I had that it, thought too. it was like when we have friends over, our friend Pete came over last week and the whole time I was looking at him like, God, I hope you like this um, <laughs> because we are 100% responsible for, for getting you here. I feel like we have a lot of uh, internet friends who are on that same boat and it's like, hey, it is kind of weird that he's like, ha- he makes love to this woman. And then he's like, the next morning, like, time to go have sex two other times with other people. See ya. Well, and you all were probably just coming into the experience of the Chris Harrison letter, which is exactly the same. And always... True to form. Always uses the, should you choose to forgo your individual rooms and spend the night together... In the fantasy suite. That language has not changed. Yeah, then a room will be provided for you. But no Jimmy hats, according to the tell-all from, uh, what's her face? Courtney. Yeah. Courtney's tell-all said they have a strict no Jimmy hat policy, which I think is crude. Well, in the fantasy suite is what she said. Like, they were not available to her in the fantasy suite. Only dental dams. I can't say dental dam on our program. She's yeah. nodding her head yes, enthusiastically. That's not- that doesn't protect you from... What doesn't? STDs. I thought that was the whole idea of it. Well, 
I guess it protects you from STDs, but it wouldn't stop a woman from getting pregnant. It's like a Ziploc bag that you like jam up in there, right? I thought it just protected you from any outside illnesses you might catch in the vicinity. How would it do that but not catch a sperm? Well, because I didn't think it was necessarily f- for <laughs> intercourse as much as it was for oral course. We need to we need to listen to still buffering and get some fucking health like middle school health class yeah. lessons. Still buffering is Sydney uh, McElroy and Riley Smurl talking teen talk. It's f- fucking phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, and but a competitor to our program, so let's dial back in. Not really a competitor. That's true. We That's don't really fair. have facts on this. Fantasy show. Suites, the okay. sex episode. He okay. goes on three dates. They were in Jamaica. <laughs> what even what is was that? that? Accent? <laughs> they were there. It was happening. They, there was lots of coconuts being drunk out of. There was one scene where they ate some jerk chicken that looked good as hell. Mm-hmm. A lot of swimsuits. A lot of oh my god, a lot of swimsuits and a lot of like Weta Works fucking uh, CGI aftertouch on some bosoms and and behinds and booties. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of weird. Like, I don't understand why they wouldn't just blur. Why would they why would they pixelate and add color? It was like Andy Serkis starring as JoJo's side boob. I know who that is now because of the Oscars. I can't believe you didn't know who Andy Serkis was before mm-hmm. the Oscars. No. He was the you remember when we saw JoJo's side boob so they kept anytime you could see a little bit too much boob and butt, which is like honestly, ABC, you're playing fucking Calvin Ball with that shit. Cause I saw Jillian's lower intestine. Um, like anytime you could see a little bit of that, there they did like a weird fake shadow on it, kind of like how they put like the yellow line on the ten on the the uh, the first down marker in football. Yeah. It was like that level of technology. Only it was like weird. It just made it look like they had a giant giant bruise on their bosom. Mm-hmm. It was weird. It was like you still. It's still a breast. Like that's a breast. You just put like a weird fake shadow over it, but it's still a breast. Like my eyes can. I have the cones to see of those cones. You know what I mean? No. All right. Lauren B. That was a genuine. I didn't high five myself. We didn't start with Lauren B, did we? No, we started with Kaila. Oh, you're right. Oh, your notes are backwards. No. Oh, you're right. You're right. I wrote Lauren B because I thought we might still keep score, but we are not going to win this. (laughs) Oh, yeah. This is a good time for us to uh, confess that we have. Opted out of our fantasy league. We are in last place. Yeah. Which means, and right now we're at the point where everybody drops down to one, and all three of the women were taken, so there was literally nobody we could take. Not that there's been. anything we think Lauren B brings in. Well, here's the thing she's going to win the whole thing. Yeah. But she's not a big smoocher, and you get your points in fantasy through the, the kisses. Through smooches, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say after today, after that teaser, I. Everything's on the table, vis-a-vis the finale. Yeah, we're not a hundred percent on Lauren B anymore. I was yesterday. Yesterday, I would have mm-hmm. sworn a stack of Bibles. Yesterday, we woke up. We had our morning conversation about how Lauren B was going to win. Mm-hmm. I put on my dental dam just to ready to face the day. <laughs> um, started out with Kaila zero zero one. Kaila zero zero one. Uh, not much of a date, honestly. No, I I remember when they they, they get on the river. Raft. They got on a river, which was like a long ass bamboo boat that was uh, piloted by um, a, a very old, sweet looking man, and they just kind of sat there on the boat. Yeah, not a lot of talking. Um, very little talking. The only thing they talked about is how they weren't talking and how anxious she was, um, and how to her it just started. She just started being anxious. Last week, because it, when they pared it down, like, it got serious for her. <sighs> yeah, and she said, she's like, you know, I just, I think I'm overthinking, enjoying the moment. Just like, what does that even mean? I don't know. She was in her own head, and Ben kind of kept trying to, like, give her pep talks and be like... Do you think it was, like, line 10, go to 20, line 20, go to 10? Like, it was a fucking, like, feedback loop in her programming? Oh. <laughs> well, she's very close to water. You think she was just terrified the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> that whole river cruise, just like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I keep my batteries in my torso. <laughs> um, yeah, she, oh, boy. I don't want I mean, we're going to talk about this episode in chronological order, but kind of a disappointing, like, 
Kayla was just kind of disappointing this week. Like, kind of fizzled out. Like, she's been such a strong competitor the whole time. Like, she's such a strong competitor that we've whipped up an entire fiction around the fact that she's a fucking... Yeah. Uh, uh, some sort of cyber organism that was built to be perfect at The Bachelor, and then just, like, didn't... 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 Not only was she bad at, like, winning the heart of the Axeman Ben Higgins, but, like, she's bad well, at winning America's heart, too. Like, her trademark smile... And like cheery disposition that he was such a big fan of. Yeah. Like she was just way too freaked out. It just did not appear until too late. They did eat that jerk chicken though, and that shit looked good. Yeah, they got off the raft and stopped at like a little a little stand. And he was like, Hey, you're weirding me out. Major. Yeah. <laughs> like big <laughs> yeah. like big, big time. Um and then oh they they did have so they did the he distributed Chris Harrison's um sex invitation. Um which she received with like the least amount of like thought I've ever seen. It was just like, she used to go your rooms. Uh, this uh, fancy suite will be provided to you. And she's like, yep, let's go. Come on, come on. Well, before that, she does say, she said part of the reason she's been weird is that she wanted to tell him that she was in love with him. And Ben was like, that's what I've been wanting. He seems so relieved. Like, Yeah, well, he doesn't say that's what I've been wanting. He's like, that's what I thought. That's why I thought you were being so, like, I forget the exact wording, but his, his point was, I thought that's why you were being so weird. It's because you're in love with me. Mm-hmm. And he sounded so, like, ch- like, he said it with childlike glee. Yeah. Like, maybe now it's not going to be weird. Uh, and so they, they walk into the ocean. There's fireworks. Yeah. Um, there's a good 45 minutes of fireworks, yeah. it seems like. like. They seem to continue. They're in the ocean. There's fireworks going off. They get out of the ocean and dry off. Still fireworks. Walk back to the hotel room. Fireworks. Through the lobby. Fireworks. Up the <laughs> stairs. Fireworks. Into the room. Fireworks. They lay down on the bed. Make out. Fireworks still happening. And then a door closes. Uh-huh. And then some other kind of fireworks, if you know what I'm talking about. What Elvis Costello might call indoor fireworks. That was a winking noise. That wasn't supposed to sound like a dental dam being activated. <laughs> I'll Google it tomorrow, and I'll probably regret a lot of the shit I said tonight. I think it's just, it's for oral course. I don't think it's for intercourse. Are you saying that? Wait, hold on. Do you think a dental dam goes on your mouth? No, I'm saying it goes in the lady part, but it is to protect people from mouth stuff, not sperm stuff. There's two, okay, the Wikipedia page for dental dam <laughs> is divided into two equal but opposite components, and one is about dentistry, and the other is about safe sex. Yeah, it's usually for use for cunnilingus and analingus, especially for women who have sex with women. However, they're rarely used by women who have sex with women for this purpose, and there is no good evidence that the use reduces STI transmission in this group. Oh, there you uh, go. Like, it barely, what the fuck? It barely reduces STIs. Yeah. All right, so it sounds like, hey, this is your first Rose Woo! Buddies. Like, this is your first Rose Buddies. The, well, congratulations, Rachel, but congratulations, America, because the more you know, apparently, like, don't use dental day. I was like, figure out a better solution. <laughs> Anyway, if they, we have taught you nothing else this season. Anyway, they blast off. <laughs> and there's still fireworks going on. Um and they I don't want I don't know what you guys want to hear me say, but they made love probably. Probably. I don't know. I don't know. Well, that's one thing we talked about this season more than previous seasons, there's been more mystery. I think in previous seasons they would like really heavy-handed like make it seem like and and her shirt lowers and then there's like splooshing noises. What? Like, like in the subtitles, they'll like, they'll like say Vag- like, vagina friction. No, <laughs> so- sound. <laughs> no, they like they make it more clear. Like, and now they're going to intercourse. Three <laughs> Eleven's Amber plays in the background. <laughs> splooshing noises. I'm just saying this season it we wasn't... have a score. This is gross, and I will admit it right now. Okay, and I know you've all wanted us to talk about the rules. We of do our... that next week. Yeah, well, or we can even save it for the mid season because we've still been trying to figure out how we're going to pad the like eight weeks of non bachelor content that we're going to have to fill. Yeah, um, it's going to be dark times, folks. Dark times. Um, but one of the points on our score sheet is obviously hooked up in the fantasy suite. Cause sometimes you do get like in the lights go out and then that's it, what I'm saying. You do you get at me like I was crazy. Well, it doesn't say fucking splooshing noises, <laughs> uh, but they'll like turn the lights out from outside. They're like filming up into the room and then you see the lights go out and then it remains on it for like five seconds. And then maybe you hear like a, 
And that's it. Like, that's usually about as far as it gets. And then sometimes it'll be, like, creaking noises, but not splooshing noises. How is your little groan soft, that you just It'll be, made? like, soft moans, but it won't be, like, this sound of, like, a, a vaginal wall. We're getting... No, we're getting real. <laughs> this is the sex episode. If we're not going to bust this oh stuff out God. now, when are we going to bust it out? I have said nothing that would be considered obscene by the by the FCC. All of this is not obscenity. First of all, we're recording this. Well, it's not after 10 p.m. It's after 10 p.m. on the East Coast, so I can say technically whatever the hell I want to. Um, <laughs> all I said was vaginal wall. <laughs> okay. So that's that's basically it for, for Kayla's date. We see them in the morning, coffee in bed, shoes on the floor, and then... Shoes on the floor? Well, they they do this every episode. They, like, zoom in on something on the floor. They did it with, with Lauren and JoJo. Yeah, but where the fuck else are the shoes going to... They don't have, probably don't have, well, like, a, a Jamaican cubby hole. Well, with the other two women, you see, like, clothes on the floor. But with Kayla, you just see very carefully placed shoes on the floor, suggesting, like, oh, she took her shoes off. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> I think you took a note of that being like Harriet the Spy. Like, I've cracked it. I don't think it's anything, baby. Anyway, he leaves. We see him walk down to the ocean. She looks at him from above. They wave. And that's the end of their date. Yeah. And Kayla's like, I think he loves me, too. He just didn't, you know, he couldn't say it. But I just felt. Let's talk about I felt that. it. Because uh, I saw a lot of people tweeting that were confused. A lot of people who's. Fr- I can't believe there's so many people's first season. It's like. It's kind of flattering that, they're, <laughs> that this is a show onboarded them. But yet, typically, historically, and they're getting more loosey-goosey with it now, um, the bachelor or the bachelorette cannot say, I love you, back to the contestants. Yeah. Can't say it. They always get it said to them, like, invariably, like, somebody busts it out before the, the proposal. That's why the contestants make such a big deal out of saying it to the bachelor or bachelorette, because... They know they're not going to hear it back. Mm. Like, it's it's tough. It's a tough thing to do. Chris, yeah, I mean, if they knew that they could say it back, it would not be... Yeah. Even even from a fakey fake TV bullshit perspective, you could still say it from the other person. But not knowing what they're going to say, even if it's, like, totally fictional, it's still, like, embarrassing. Because you don't want to do that shit on TV and then mm-hmm. get smacked down. Um, uh, Chris Souls did it. We were trying to remember who he said it to. And I'm pretty sure it was Chris Souls. Um, but Chris Soul said it to one of the women, and I remember seeing that being like, and my mind exploded. So this time, when he does say it, uh, when Ben says it, like it was less affecting, but still like pretty bonkers. Because in the in the grand scheme of things, it's only happened, as far as I know, just once before this episode that a bachelor bachelorette has said "I love you" to the woman. Well, yeah, and f- and for those of you that don't watch the show, surprise, Ben says "I love you" to two women. Yeah, on this episode, let's get it out, and certainly by. Um, just sort of like deduction, you've figured out who did it. Uh, so next is Lauren B. Yeah, Lauren B. And they have a super cool date. It's probably the one of the best dates I've made. Certainly the best date of the season. Um, uh, maybe one of the best dates I've ever seen on the show. It starts like the very first thing they do, baby sea turtles. Which I didn't. Can I say something? I did not know I was into. There was a man named Mel. I saw somebody in the group say that they wanted to be the bachelor for the next season. It was just fun because he looked like he just looked like a fun, pleasant older man named Mel with a British accent who was like very into the survival of sea turtles. Like, yeah, extreme. they learn all about them. They like pull up a little like chicken wire thing, and there's all these little babies, and they have to wash them off. And he's talking about the predators and how they like make sure that the little babies survive. They made it sound... So at first they were like, we put a little cage around these little guys so they can't leave. And I was like, fuck that. No. Mel? Mel? <laughs> no, I trusted you. But then he was like, but then like in the wild, like one out of every thousand don't get fucked up by a crab. And it's like, alright, Mel, you do your thing. I trust yeah. you now. Um... Yeah, and so they take this big bucket of turtles, and they, like... That sounds bad. When you say a big bucket of turtles, I don't... That's tur- what it was. Yeah, but turtles don't do anything for me. Turtles don't do anything for me. A big grown-up-ass turtle, like, I see that, and I'm like, n- no. Oh, yeah, these were, like, these were like these silver were, dollar size. They were silver dollar size little adorable little mm-hmm. guys. Real cute. They were cute little guys, and they were flapping their flappers so much. They were just... I didn't think anything was going to beat water pigs. 
yeah. these little, little, little turtles that you could hold, like, I, I'm holding my hands out and I'm cupping them on both. I could probably get, like, 12 to 13 turtles in there. Yeah. Just wiggling around, flipping their little flappers, just trying to get to the ocean. So they all go, to, they, all the turtles go out to the ocean. How do they find their, like, mom and dad? I don't think that's part of the deal. They're just like, bye, kids. I think so. Don't get fucked up by a crab. I mean, that's what was kind of confusing to me. I thought usually the way it works in the wild is like the the mom turtle or some turtle will come and they'll like uncover the eggs and then the little turtles will follow yeah. the parent into the ocean. I don't know what this was. I mean, but then the parent turtle's like, tubular, dude. Just catch the flow, like I'm finding Nemo. Yeah. I loved these little t- ass turtles. Yeah, they were great. But, uh, yeah, they, they put them in the sand and they go out into the water. And wash them off, give them a little turtle bath. And they get sandy again. I don't really know yeah, why. Yeah, it was pointless. That was probably just because it was so cute. That's for my benefit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mel knows what you like. Mel knows exactly what I like. Hello, Griffin. Would you like to see me wash off a few turtles? I'm the turtle dad. Come on, Griffin. You could be one of my. Tur- you could be one of me turtles. Griffin was calling him the turtle dad, and I thought there was like a really good, like Splinter reference in there somewhere that he could make. But yeah. I don't know enough about. TM- it doesn't, it doesn't look like Splinter though. T M, N T to make that kind of joke. Um. No, he looked like um. Kenny Rogers, but British. Yeah. He didn't look like Splinter, the rat, the rat ninja. No, but isn't Splinter like kind of the turtle dad? I mean, he didn't produce that. He didn't like no, blast but he's out. Like he a didn't father blast figure. off. Blast off, and a bunch of turtles came. He's out. like a father figure to me. Yeah, them. sure. Uh, that was only the start of the date, though, and then it got real. Yeah, they um. Well, they they sit on a ble uh, a bleach blanket. No, a beach blanket, mm-hmm. and um. They have a really like sweet heart to heart where Ben tells the story that we all saw last week where he was talking to Lauren's sister and he made sure to drop it. Like, yeah. It's like, I cried by I, the way. Hey, by the way, these eyes here, uh, they were juicing. Your sister was like, you're so great. And I was like, yeah, I know. And I cried. It was cloudy with a chance of meatballs up in these eyes crying over you baby that's what i was like over you just thought about how perfect you are and i was just like (laughs) and And your sister like went wild loved it and then ben was like you know your sister was saying all these nice things about you and how great you are and and you're you're too good to me or you're too good for me like, it just occurred to me that you're too good for me. And I'm, she's like, oh, Ben! I know. That's the only way that she's capable of saying his name, I'm convinced. Yeah. Ben! Ben! Um, uh, sweet, as, sweet as pumpkin pie. She was just, like, blown away like, by that comment. You're legitimately the man of my dreams, Ben. It was, a real, it was a real cute moment. I made the comment when these comments were taking place. I'm starting to... F- I'm starting to feel it for these two. Yeah. And I haven't I haven't felt this I mean I definitely haven't felt this way since Sean and Catherine, but I haven't really felt that deep connection like I did with Emily and Jeff with 1F. And that hurt me. So I haven't opened myself I haven't even opened myself up to the fucking possibility. It's probably made me hard like maybe I really would have gotten into Andy and Chris. Maybe I would have gotten into them, but I was, I was fucking It's hard like a turtle shell, like a like an adult turtle. I need to have that soft, soft baby turtle shell and let the crab of love bite into me. Ooh, that was beautiful. <laughs> uh, here's what I will say, though, about Lauren B. and Ben. Not particularly interesting people. Just really into each other. Yeah, but Which like, is nice. I think that they're both super nice people. And I, yeah. I, I, you know, Sean and Catherine, who I adore... Aren't like they're not like fucking in Cirque du Soleil doing stunts all the time. Yeah, but they were kind of quirky and funny together. I think that's true of these two. Maybe not. Maybe tell, I'm projecting. Tell me a funny exchange they've had. <laughs> tell me a funny thing they said to each other, or like a funny moment. Uh, there's the moment in the after the credits today where a crab bit his toe, and he was like, "A crab bit my toe," and she was like, "Yeah, I saw it." Yeah. So that was pretty good. <laughs> um. After they have their little beach blanket love chat, um, 
they go to the reggae club. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, which seems like another, like, cool thing that they did. You think about Kayla, they got on a raft, they ate some food, that was it. But and they, then they went and ate some more food in a different, a third but location. But Lauren B got, like, they baby went to, like, turtles a dope -ass reggae and concert. some live reggae music. That looked, like, fun as hell. It did look really fun. I would have blazed it and just, like, ate that jerk and then done the jerk right there on the floor. By which I mean the dance. I would not have jerked off in Jamaica in front of a big crowd of strangers. It is a sex episode, though, and we're going to be throwing a lot of challenging <laughs> ideas at you. And they're going to be done a warning. They're the going to be coming fast and furious. NSFW, don't listen around your boss, because he'll he or she will know. You should um you should edit in a warning at the beginning now. No, they know now. They know, and now it's just going to get looter. Now it's only going to get more and more lewd. This is your warning. The next twenty five minutes of this show are going to get more lewd. It's going to be fucking wet and wild. It's going to be Super Water Zero. But Griffin and Rachel, you talked about dental dance for like 12 minutes. Yeah, I know. Now imagine what's worse than that, because that's what we're going to be hitting even harder. <laughs> um, so they go to the Sandals after that. Mm -hmm. Accommodations provided by Sandals. Thank you, Sandals. Hey, can we say? Thank you, Sandals. Well, we didn't like it to go to no, Sandals. No, I know, but it looked like they all had a really great time. <laughs> Um, were they all staying in the same sandals? Somebody we were watching with was like, made the comment of like, they do they like change the sheets between seshes? And it's like, well, it's in three different rooms because that yeah, would be the, the most, room. that would be weird. Just like getting my, getting my pig trough. <laughs> come on, come on in, come on into my love arena. There, there are weird hairs all over the place. I don't know who they belong to. Just nestle in. There's a half inch of standing fluid just from something. <laughs> you don't know what it's from. There's that lewd content. And there's definitely a smell. Definitely, oh my God. definitely a smell. A rowdy smell. A permanent smell. We're burning the sandals to the ground when we leave. Well, I guess after Kayla, though, it would just be like a WD-40 kind of smell. Rachel. A robot joke? No? Too soon? I think she's advanced beyond, like, needed. She's not the fucking Tin Man. <laughs> she's an advanced bioorganism. Whatever whatever stuff that, whatever, like, synth fluid she leaves behind has, like, amino acids in it. <laughs> oh, God. I'm saying that's how sophisticated, there's nanomachines. What is that? What do you mean? What does that mean? I've said too much. Okay. Uh, and this is where things get real sweet between those two. Um, I took some notes here. So Ben starts saying, um, well, they start talking about their relationship and she says, I'm completely in love with you. And typically that is where Ben would stop and they would make out and that would be the end of it. But Ben starts talking, says, you know, after meeting your family, especially, I know you don't jump into things. And then he says, I've known I'm in love with you for a while. And uh, which like unprecedented. Yeah, that to I think if if Crystal I'm almost certain Crystal said it. If he did, it was just like, I love you. Yeah, not like here's some backstory. The fucking it. axe man drops that line maybe a dozen times throughout the yeah, episode. Yeah, they keep saying it. Um and Lauren B's reaction is the most maybe the most adorable is like it's on par with like not all the baby turtles they saw, but if you could take, like, five or six of them and, like, separate them, it's, like, that's my new metric for, like, how adorable things are. And, like, her just, like, falling backwards, like, I think she even just said, like, what? Yeah, she did. Um, and then, yeah, they say it back and forth a few times, and it's, like, America's just, like, what? Yeah, we could feel it. I could feel it. Like, it's, tell me it's real. The feeling that I feel. That's another good love jam. That it's real. Don't let love come just to pass us by. Harmonize with me. Try. You don't know the words, do you? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> um, do you know who did it? No. Gosh. Gosh. Who? <laughs> Casey and JoJo. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's a sweet exchange. Yeah. And, and then, then they share then they share a wet embrace. 
<laughs> we again, we don't we don't see any closed caption splooshing. No, it's just they cut There's away. No, like print, then... in parentheses, thigh clapping. Like <laughs> if I say it the same way twice in a row, then the the, the curse will be broken. Um, but that could be any. That could be that. Like, like they're like doing like a little like a little soft shoe, a little bluegrass like spoons number. Well, I mean, I'm sure there was some spooning. <laughs> hey, well. Uh, wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> She's really dragging our heels on this one. Uh, and so this is the. We come back and camera zooms in. Clothes on the ground. So more shoes, than shoes. on the shoes on the fucking floor, ladies and gentlemen. You know what that means. So we're actually clothes on the ground. If these shoes are flooring, don't touch the door in. Lauren. Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> There's our t-shirts. <laughs> if, the, if the shoes are on the flooring, don't bother Lauren. She's making love. <laughs> um, and Ben comes in with the room service and he's like, I made breakfast. And they're just, they're yeah, the did. cutest. And then they go outside and they talk about how they love each other again. They're like sitting by a pool and, and he's like, I do love you. No, he does. Does he say do? Yeah, he does. Because remember, we thought maybe that was a clip from him saying it to another person. Yeah. And then we know it's him saying it to Which Lauren again. Which they fucking tricked us because they definitely did. And Lauren's talking to the camera after and she's like, Ben, Ben's just my person. That's really sweet. But mm-hmm. she said this while he was walking away to get another woman's stink all up on and all over and inside him. Yeah. Yeah. We all were thinking like. He just told this woman he loved her, and now he is literally leaving their love bed to go into the bed of another. Tempted by the fruit of another. Tempted by the truth is discovered. (laughs) What's been going on? Ooh, change the tempo. I don't know how to keep up. Now that you've been gone. There's no other. You got it, baby. I know that one. You know who sang that one? Soft Cell? No. They did Tainted no. Love. Oh, shoot. Uh, squeeze. Squeeze. Uh. Uh, okay, anyway. Not important at all. <laughs> you know what it's like to be on a podcast now where you're just constantly Googling errata and interrupting the flow? Well, I mean, you are. I'm not. Yeah, but you're party to it. It's true. Uh, Jojo. Jojo received a lot of CGI Andy Circus touch-up treatment. Yeah, her swimsuit was maybe the most revealing of the bunch. Yeah. And so she had to get the most. The most. Like, her, her, the left and right side of her right and left breast, respectively. <laughs> the outside portions of her bosom. Side, bo- side boobs, some might call it. The outside portions of her bosom. Andy was putting in a lot of really good work over there. <laughs> it wasn't, but maybe it's not his most uh, like challenging acting challenge because he mainly just had to like stay stationary and look like, you know, like a like solid flesh or whatever. But I thought he did a great job, and that's why he brings in the big bucks. Uh, they are in swimsuits. They're walking around a waterfall. And they get to the I love you is pretty quick on this on this date. Yeah, they don't fuck around. Um, she says, I mean, she just like drops it. And- yeah, she's like, I, you know, I just want you to know I'm not just I'm not just falling in love with you. I do love you. And do he- you know, do, do the listeners know about I do love you and like the really important distinction that like that is the only it's so a lot of this show is watching and like being able to analyze and be like, that's bullshit, bullshit, that's bullshit, that's acting, that's bullshit, that's gameplay, that's bullshit. And then hoping, holding out hope in your heart that like, Man, there's a real connection happening here and trying to find that shit. When somebody says do in it, when somebody says, I do love you, that's like, that's how a person who's extremely uncomfortable says I love you to somebody else. I do love you. Yeah, well, there's this big understanding. I think maybe it's because of the sex that happens in the fantasy suites. Like, if you haven't said I love you, you better say it before you hook up that night. Like, there's an understanding that it happens 
at the latest on this episode. And it used to happen. It used to be all three of the finalists would say it in this episode invariably. And now they've just been pushing the envelope forward and forward. And now it's like week one. It's like, I just feel it. I got to say it. Don't yeah. say it. Don't fucking say it. That's how Olivia got in trouble. That's how, well, Olivia was in trouble long before she Yeah, but that, he kind of cited that as his reason. Of yeah. Like, oh, you're in love with me? Shoot, I better I think this. he was looking for a dope-ass easy reason to... Yeah. So JoJo drops it, like, in her very, like, it's, I don't want to say rehearse because that sounds shitty, but, like, she knew what she was going to say, and she said it. Uh, and she looked like she wasn't expecting really anything out of it. And then he says, JoJo, I love you, too. And that's, like, it looked like he full force just punched her right in the face. And she, more than Lauren B., like, you can see it wash over her of, like, I've got this. I've won this. This is mine. And that's when, like... I tweeted, like, Ben, what the fuck are you doing, homie? Because that's, like, that's some brutal shit. Like, because both of them had the same reaction. Like, yeah, you summed it up. Like, I got, I won. Yeah, I won. this never happens. The fact that he said it must mean that I'm I I've I'm won the winner. The ba- she has, like, a little panic attack. And she's, like, starts being, like, she was already, like, pretty affectionate with him. Starts being, like, really affectionate. Yeah. Like, yeah. she says, like, babe, I'm so happy right now. That's like that yeah. that term of endearment. Yeah, like, stuck I noticed out that to me. Babe, that babe too, like way more familiar all of a sudden. Than yeah, before. which is like it sucks. Like it's gonna oh god, the finale is gonna be fucking devastating for somebody for America definitely. Um, but it's interesting watching that switch get flipped of like now you're like now you're feeling like now you feel like yeah. oh shit I gotta step it up. Yeah. and if you've just said like I love you to a person. And it's, it's like, that's just what you say at this point in the game. And then they say it back to you and it becomes very, very like real and unprecedented. I don't think like they can't keep doing this every season where people say it before the, the proposal or whatever, because then like you won't get this effect of something like, Oh shit. Is this, yeah. is this Casey and Jojo real, real? Do you think, here's a question. Do you think Jojo is as in love as Lauren B? That, how do I, how can I even quantify that? I think Lauren B has been more on this level that it looked like JoJo just got to when he like scared the shit out of her with this. I felt like JoJo's response was almost a little theatrical, was almost a little bit like, oh, oh, we're at this place now. Oh, okay, babe. Like, it just, it felt a little like... I have, I have a hard time judging it, because I feel like she hasn't been a front runner as long as Lauren B. has. Like, it wasn't, for me, it wasn't until the water pig date, where I was like, oh, they actually have, like, a pretty good connection. Like, I, yeah. for, at that point, like, she was just sort of in the in the middle of the pack and could have gone home at any point, and I wouldn't have been especially surprised. But that was when she sort of started to separate herself. For, for Lauren B., it's like, from week one, I was like, that's going to be the winner. Um, And so, I don't I don't know. I honestly don't know, which is, like, why I'm... We can talk about this later when we talk about the teaser for the finale, but, like, I have no fucking clue what's going to happen up in that finale. Yeah. Uh, what else did they do on this date? Well, the one thing that Ben tells us, the viewer, is after that exchange, Ben starts saying, like, you know, I just, I feel like I really need to get the support of her family. Like, now that we're at this place. A lot of discussion about how And so they start talking about the brothers again of, like... And she acted like she didn't know what had been talked about, yeah. what had been discussed, which seems like you would have yeah, found she's out like, somehow. Yeah, oh, oh, you know, they're good guys. They just haven't seen us together. They're just, like, really in love with me. Like, really, <laughs> like, but not like brother, sister, and, like, like love, love, love. Like, Griffin loves Rachel. Like, that level of it. Yeah. Does that make sense? <laughs> that's that's a thing, right? Like, two brothers just being madly in love with their younger sister. Um. Yeah, it got weird. Uh. And, yeah, there's a lot of discussion about that. That's probably going to weigh into whatever happens in the finale. There's a lot of discussion in our group of, like, maybe he calls the family to, like, get blessing for JoJo. But I just can't foresee yeah, a scenario there's a where lot Lauren B doesn't win. There's a lot of teasers win. of the final episode that we've seen at this point where it shows Ben on the phone. He says the words, I, I'm about to ask somebody to spend the rest of their life with me, but how can I do that if there's somebody else I love more? And then it shows him making a call on a phone. So it definitely seems like he doubles back We've somehow. We've really attached to that phone call, and I don't think it's significant yeah. as it seems. Sure. Um, uh, do okay. they do anything else on their date, though? They make, I mean, they, obviously they make hot, stanky love. They get in the swimsuit, and they get in the pool, fucking and Andy they, Circus pop, gets back out. they pop champagne. 
And you were very excited. She catches excited. the cork. Yeah, that was I some dope. I missed she, it. No, it like ricocheted around the room, and she was like, "Bazinga!" Grabbed it. It was dope. <laughs> it was sick as hell. Um, and yeah, and then and then we cut away. We assume they're having sex, and then morning time, they're feeding each other fruit. Mm-hmm. And and they are literally doing the like, "You're so cute." No, you are. You're the cutest. No, you are the cutest. So it was like one of them said, "What is that?" And the other person was like, it's watermelon. And then they ate it, and they're like, it's actually pretty good. Like, yeah, it's fucking watermelon. <laughs> it's dope. Like, it's really good. Maybe. It's like the biggest and best fruit that there is. Maybe watermelon's like their inside thing, where they've had long cocks about how it's not good. Did you just say long cocks? You definitely, no, no you I definitely said did. long talks. I'm going to run it back, and I'm going to do it in, like, Paul stretch, like, stretch out the audio, like, way, way long. And people are like, yeah, that was a hard C consonant sound. I said long Somebody's talks. in the spirit of the sex episode, Rachel McElroy, you dirty bird. <laughs> Where they've had long cocks about how it's not good. Long cocks. Long cocks. Well, we'll let the listeners decide. They decided. They're tweeting at you right now. I can't believe you've said this. Oh, God, I hope they don't tweet at me. <laughs> Rachel, I can't believe you would say this. I'm scandalized. Hashtag long I, Me, the mayor of city? I've been scandalized. I was listening to my favorite podcast about my favorite TV show. And then uh, one of the hosts, a devilish little woman... Said the Henry, she said the words long cocks. <laughs> okay. I've ne I've never Okay. So this is when we know he told Lauren he loves her. He told Jojo he loves her. Which is like it's, it's just bonker. Like, Rachel, I love you. Audience, I love you too. Superwater Zero. I love you. Computer monitor, I, mean, that's, I love you. That's all true. Lamp, like, these I, are all true things. You do lamp, love all these. No, I equally. Lamp, I love you. It's just like if you're just going to say shit. You don't think it's possible for a person to be in love with two people at once? That they met equally at the same time eight weeks ago? That they've had like fucking maybe four hours combined interaction with? Hell no. I think maybe I can suspend my disbelief and be like, love at first sight. You have that shit with one person and you're like, Bazinga, I found it. I found her. Like, I can, I, I can, I can buy into that at, at like base level cynicism. Like, I can buy into that at that point. But for that to happen two times is like, that's like crazy. It's like opening up a clam and there's two pearls up in it. No. 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 I think he said it to Lauren. What I said at the, in the moment when he said it to Lauren B and I knew the other one was coming, I was like, this is so fucking real that I think he just like said it. It just like came out. And then the producers were like, well, in order to keep things spicy, say it to JoJo too. And he dropped it. Yeah, but he says it a lot to JoJo too. He does say it's it not a like lot he just says it once. Another theory is that he's the greatest axe man to ever play the fucking sport. And it's just gotten too easy for him. And he's trying to, like, add some difficulty to it by, like, getting deep into the log that he's about to split. Yeah, like creating a situation that is hard to get out of. And based on the teasers we've seen in the finale, it seems like he even kicks it up a fucking notch. And he get, he goes, like, crazy on it. And I think even if he breaks everybody's heart, by the end of it, in the finale, after the final rose, people are going to be like, Ben... You're a number one D-bag, but you're the best that's ever played this fucking game. And that'll be a standing ovation. And he'll get put... He'll be inducted. His jersey will raise into the air, and they will never use the name Ben. Nobody named Ben will ever be allowed <laughs> on the show ever again. Uh, so we know he's in love with two women. There's a third woman. This is like 40 minutes left in the... Like, as soon as he says it's JoJo... He says it's JoJo. We're not even an hour into the episode. Yeah. It's like, well, that's it. For, we're not even done with JoJo's date yet, which is the th third date. And we're like, well, Kayla's done. Yeah. Yeah, we know that things are going to end with Kayla. And uh, traditionally, it would happen at a rose ceremony. But Kayla, either of her own no, volition not. or pushed by a producer, yes. decides to go visit him. Because she's just. it's been a while since she's seen him. 
And she shows up and she is just a bubbly schoolgirl, just giggling, just running through the house, looking for Ben and like running up behind him on the bench. And he is sitting on that bench and he is looking morose. Like he is like, oh, I know I have to do this. And she surprises him, puts. Yeah, she activates her like stealth.exe. <laughs> puts her hands on his eyes and, and he, he looks The a look little, on his face is like pretty A little amazing. uncomfortable, yeah. Um, they played that, they, they, they did some weird editing there where like she was so happy. It's kind of a shitty double standard of like when the bachelor has decided that he's done with you, it's yeah. really easy for the editor. The tone changes entirely. To make it seem like you are like full blown single white female, yeah. like bonkers. Be- and it sucks. It's like gross because it's like, that's not. She probably had no idea that she was going home, so she was just being like, she was doing happy.exe, and like that's all that she's done this whole time. Yeah. Only now, with the understanding that, oh, this woman's going home, and Ben's not feeling it, and she's sneaking into his house, what would otherwise be like a pretty cute, innocuous, like, yeah, they make action. her look like, like a crazy lady, like running through Ben's house looking for him. Dude, that's just gonna fucking stab him in the brain as soon yeah. as she finds him. And so she's like, oh, let's spend time together. You know, I'm so excited. And she like runs up to him, and he's kind of like stiff, uh, and she is like, Kind of all of a sudden, like, oh, I'm sorry I surprised you. And he's like, no, it's not that. I'm glad you're here because I just wanted to talk to you. And, like, you know, you couldn't, you you weren't able to tell me that you were in love with me. And then as soon as he said that, like, a, you know, the fucking Pop-Tarts shot out the side of her robot head because she realized, like, the, the jig is up. Yeah, he's like, you know, the two other women here have said that they loved me and... And I just reacted, and it just felt natural, and I just couldn't do that with you. Yeah. Um, and so she, like, very quick... The, the whole exchange was, like, real, real quick. Um, she did not have, like, a sloppy, like, breakdown. Well, there was an interesting moment, because she's like, okay, I want to go. She gets in the car, gets she, back she, out of the well, car. Well, before that even happens, she says... Uh, he's like, I've had such a good time getting to know you, and it's like, I, I really, like... It's just the other two women here are saying that, like, I wanted that for us, but, like, I don't think it's going to be like that. And she says, well, that sounds like a line, but thanks. Yeah. It's like, whoa, okay. Um, she, she doesn't have this, like, and, it, and this is another double standard that, like, apparently I also subscribe to, but, like, when you make it this far, when you get kicked off the show, if you don't just, like, fall to pieces, like, I look at that and I'm like, well, then maybe, uh, like, if you say to a person, like, I love you. And then that person says, cool, let's go on a date. And then later that week is like, fuck right off. And you're not, like, devastated by that? Well, and that's why she gets back out of the car. Because she suddenly has this realization of, like, I think she's in shock. And I think she gets in the car. And then she realizes, like, wait, we'll wait. And she gets out of the car. And it's like, I'm going to use this time while I have it. And then you can tell she's thinking, like, wait, how long have you known? You know, like, how long? Like, did you know before before we even had our date? Did you know before we, like, had the fantasy suite? And he's like, oh, no, 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 you wouldn't. I wouldn't be here. But you could just see this real moment where she's just like. I'm going to get some answers. Like, I've been in the bottom this whole time. You never thought. Yeah. You know, she was sad in the car. No, you're right. How much do you need, really? <laughs> a lot, apparently. Do you want her to, like, short circuit entirely? Um, I would like to see a short circuit sequel starring Kyla 001. I mean, there was already a sequel to Short Circuit. Yes. I want... She's going to be definitely throwing some fucking heat, throwing some zingers next week, The Women Tell All. Yeah. Which we'll talk about that later. It's going to yeah. be tricky to do an episode on, but we'll figure something out. Yeah. Um... Yeah, she's gonna come back with a vengeance. I, I am not, I, I, here's what I'm saying. I, I didn't want to focus too much on like, she didn't cry enough for me. So I, I just feel like she just kind of fizzled out there at the end. And not just because she got sent home, like Caitlin got sent home in third, like lots of really great contestants have been sent home in third place. It's an honorable position to be sent off in. Better even than I think than second place. Um, what I'm saying is, like, it just kind of feels like her her finish on the show is not... Well, they set it up a little bit, right? Because we start seeing... I mean, for weeks now, we've seen Kayla get in her own head. Like, they'll have dates, and he'll be like, oh, what are you thinking? 
you know, you're normally smiley all the time. And anytime that she's not. But I think a lot of that was just like her trying to counter counter the axe man and trying to make it, him do a little bit of the chase. Which apparently is oh, not what see, he... you always thought that was strategy. Yeah. I don't think so. I think this week made it clear, like, that's not strategy. She's just like, can't be in the moment. Yeah. Well, one step back for AI testing. I guess she she failed the Turing test. Um, what if next season, like, it's just... Because next season will be The Bachelorette. What if the fucking IBM, like, Watson, like, screen is one of the... Like, I can understand idioms. I don't... Do I, you, would you like to see my attachments? And then he would have, like, a variety of attachments. So you're saying he would compete for Kayla's love? Is that what you're saying? Well, no, that wouldn't be fucking fair. Because you'd be like, mm, uh, Watson, thank you. I will take the other robot... Thank you. It will be very easy no, for us to link up. No, I don't up. think. I mean, you got you got to go for somebody that's a little different than you. Somebody two silence. Two silence can't make a baby with each other. That's why the silence had to start like hooking up with men <laughs> in the first place. That's another way to say it. Yeah. That's a good point, baby. I didn't think about yeah. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, she gets sent home. They still have a rose ceremony. Yeah, Chris st- Harrison shows up. Chris for the Harrison. First time. What the fuck, Ch? <laughs> like. Somebody pointed out that at some point in the episode, Ben said, like, I just wish I had a guide through all this. Like, you did, you ungrateful fuck. Pay attention to the gifts that have been given you. Yeah, so Chris Harrison greets both of the ladies, like, oh, do you have a good date? And they're both like, yeah, we're in love. And Chris is like, oh, cool. <laughs> Great. Yeah, especially Lauren B is like, oh, yeah, he told me that he he loves me back. And he's like, oh, did he? <laughs> <laughs> Gang, like... If you're just not watching the show, you have missed you missed out on the the seasons where Chris Harrison was like dropping that shit. Like he's he's a genuinely he said that one gross thing about like having a minority uh, bachelor. Yeah. Uh, but like for the most part, he's been like really a genuinely good host of the show. He also was not very happy about the show Unreal. Did you ever see his comments? Oh no! Well, the character the. the so, okay, I loved Unreal, but the way that they portrayed like the host of yeah. the fake show in Unreal was like fucking garbage. It was the worst thing about he, that. He like show. he had like a real Donald Trump reaction to Unreal, where he was just like, he was just like, oh yeah, it's not a very good show, and nobody's watching it, so that tells you all you need to know. Sorry, Chris, we watched it. It's fucking it's stellar. A great show. Yeah. It's on Hulu now. Yeah, it's great. Um, uh, uh, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, Chris Harrison. Drop yeah. some knowledge. But he used to be in there like every episode. He'd be like, so how's it going? How, tell me about your journey. And you get to learn a little bit more about The Bachelor. Now they just deliver that shit in those like yeah. one-on-one interviews. Anyway, so the women both go down. They're like, where's Kayla? It's weird Kayla's not here. And then Ben shows up and it's like, yeah, Kayla's gone. Um, but anyway, I'm still going to give you roses. Gives JoJo the first rose. Does that mean something? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they both have roses. They do like an awkward three-person hug. Ben's like, I can't believe that I can touch all of you at the same time. He says, I can't believe I can hug all of you. That's weird. You changing that one word makes it, like, exceedingly weird. Um, yeah, and then they keep cheersing. Like, yeah, each, just fun- each person gives a toast. Yeah, it's weird. And, and what's weird is, like, they give toasts to love, which is, like, this weird kind of, like, we're all in love now, right? Like, all three of us are in love. What are the odds that this thing ends in a sister-wife scenario? Zero. <laughs> What it, can you give me like zero point zero one? You like, think they'd go to sister wives before they go to diversity? Yes, <laughs> I had to think about it, but absolutely I do. Um, so let's talk about the finale first, and then we'll talk about what next week's going to be like. The finale teaser just looks bonkers. Like, we've talked about it pretty much throughout the whole episode. Yeah, I mean, we know what we know is. Yeah. Uh, we meet the parents officially. We meet the parents. We see shots of both of the women crying in different modes of transportation. We see Ben say the words, um, I'm about to ask somebody to spend the rest of their life with me when there's somebody else that I'm in love with more. And then we see him saying, I've got to do this or something like that and making a phone call. Yep. The fuck does that mean? We can't even speculate. I have no idea. Damn it, Bachelor. You fucking got me again. You got me good. Yeah. I mean, I think we used to think maybe there was some, like, third runner-up or somebody that he realized he still had feelings for. There's no way he's going to call up Kayla. And but yeah, like, no, it's definitely between Lauren and JoJo. And it's just a question of... What this- if it's Caitlyn? What if it's Caitlyn? No, it's not Caitlyn. Caitlyn broke his heart last season. No. What if it's fucking Caitlyn? No. 
It'd be scandalous. Uh, but next week is the Women Tell All, which is when all the cast off ladies come back and they get asked a lot of questions. This will be a big Chris Harrison app, actually. This is where you'll get to see your Chris Harrison because yeah. he moderates the discussion. This is where you'll see where he's the best in the game. He'll he, typically he'll say. I actually, you know what? No, he's fucking the best in the business because there's a lot of yelling that takes place, and yeah. he keeps a cool fucking head, and he 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 steers the conversation back to a good place. It's gonna I be mean, a lot of attacks on Olivia. Yeah, the best in the business is uh, Jeff Probst. I love Jeff Probst. Anytime they have somebody on the show who like you remember that one guy who like made a lot of like gay jokes at the other dude yeah. during Tribal Council, and then like. At the, at the, after the survivor reunion, he was like, do you get, you want to walk that back at all? He's like, well, you know, I, if it walks like a duck and Jeff Probst was like, shut your fucking mouth. You're done. (laughs) You're no. And the guy's like, no, I'm just, he's like, no, you're fucking done. You're done. I'm Jeff Probst. You're done. Yeah. Beautiful hog too. Beautiful hog on that man. Anyway, I don't know anything about Chris Harrison's hog. I'm sure it's great. (laughs) God, there it is again. But yeah, it's going to be the women tell all. I do not. Envy Rachel for having to take notes during that. I do want me to take, try to take, maybe we should both take notes for Women Tell All. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's gonna come fucking. Uh, there's, there's just a lot of like, there'll be a lot of questions answered. For example, a lot of you were talking about Leah's black eye. I'm sure they'll ask her about that. Yeah. Um, they'll ask Lace, you know, whether she regrets leaving. Hopefully, uh, what is her name? I've forgotten it already. The military hero. Jubilee? Jubilee. What the fuck? Oh, Her name's gosh. Jubilee. Hopefully Jubilee will She's be there. She's named after an X-Man. How do, you, how do you forget that? I don't know she was named after an X-Man. She probably wasn't named after an X-Man, but she shared. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's probably going to be a short episode next week, right? Of Rose- Should we Well, get, like, we'll talk about the rules, I think. Could we get like people to send in questions like about the show or about the... If, if you're confused about... We could, but I don't know that we could answer them. Well, like, no, 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 I'm not talking about, like, who's going to win, but, like, questions that they have, like, questions like, why the fuck do you guys watch this? Or, who's your favorite contestant of all time? Or, why did this person do this in this situation? Um, or, what's a dental dam? Like, I feel like we could really feel oh, that gosh. shit. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, no, I think, I think the Women Tell All has a lot of, a lot of content. Yeah. Um, I loved how many people were tweeting about the show. Can we just officially say rose buddies hashtag i know other people are yeah. using it for like other shit but like rose buddies cast nobody's using if you want to hear about the show live tweet it during this we're like always on twitter like looking at our phones while we're taking notes and watching the show and the tweets are like fucking amazing uh so rose buddies it's the official hashtag of rose buddies and then we have the rose buddies group on facebook yes. that is like fire nonstop. and thank you to everybody that responded to our call for reviews on itunes we yeah. got a whole whole bunch of them and they were all so positive it was great um we get a lot of requests from people saying like you should do rupaul's drag race which if we do that we're gonna have to get cable this is this podcast somebody made the point <laughs> of like hey griffin is this podcast like your long con to get rachel to like agree to get a cable box in your house um the answer is yes the answer is yes <laughs> and we have people say like you should do a survivor one like I, we're trying. We're already like figuring out how we can bridge the gap between this and Bachelor in Paradise, and then Bachelor in Paradise. Yeah, I don't, we're not gonna like go dark entirely in between. Yeah, seasons. we're gonna figure out ways to like keep the thing going. Because for those of you that don't know, there is a short break in between Bachelor and Bachelorette that is usually about a month or two. So between we'll need- Bachelor and Bachelorette, yeah. Between Bachelor in Paradise and Bachelorette. No, it's going to go Bachelor, Bachelorette, and then Bachelor in Paradise. Bachelor in Paradise is the summer hit. No, Bachelor in Paradise doesn't start till late. It starts in like August or something. No, lately the way it's it's been starting, Bachelor starts in January, Bachelorette starts in May, Bachelor in Paradise starts in August. Interesting. Okay, mm-hmm. I trust you. <laughs> um. So anyway, so we'll find some way to keep talking. Keep, keep talking about things. Um And... You find a way to keep listening. Sorry, this episode got so doity, but we had to. We had to. It was this. It was the fantasy suite. It was a sex episode. I see it and I get just all riled up. <laughs> how, am I, how am I supposed to resist? I'm Rachel McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. When you're ready. Final rose. Stay with us on this journey of joy. Spoiler alert. She ends up with Soldier Boy. Right, resist. Right, resist. Let it go. All aboard.